Kazuo Ishiguro, Haruki Murakami, Neti Okurafor. I've got some heavy hitters coming at you today. I'm Michael Everts. You're watching Fit to Be Read. Today I'm going to do a mid March book haul. These are books that I ordered several weeks ago. It's the second batch I've gotten in. I did a review a few weeks ago of the first, I think, five books that came in. This is the group I've really been looking forward to. Just by those authors I mentioned, you can guess I'm talking about some really phenomenal books. We've also got Samuel R. Delaney in here, and we'll see who else we have in here. So let's get started. The first book in our box is Kafka on the Shore by Haruki Murakami. Now, I've never read this book. I've heard really great things about it. I understand that it's about a teenage boy, Kafka Tamura. He's on this mysterious odyssey or journey. And some really strange things are happening, like fish and other stuff fall from the sky. There's a brutal murder. Cats are talking to people. And spirits can leave people's bodies and make love or maybe commit murder. I've heard this book refer to using terms such as extravagant, acclaimed, magical realism, dreamlike. So I'm really looking forward to diving into that. The next book is one that I've been really waiting for to come out. I didn't get any pre-orders on this or anything like that. It's Clara and the Sun by Kazuo Ishiguro. We've got that over here. Let's grab that guy. This is Ishiguro's first novel since winning the Nobel Prize for Literature. And in this book, I understand that there is an AI narrator, and the story is about this AI and how she sees the world. She's solar-powered, so maybe there's some sun worship in there, or the sun is a god to this AI. I'm told to expect that not a whole lot happens in this story, which is not necessarily a great selling point, but I'm supposed to look past that and just recognize that this is a novel that is about the meaning of human life and about love. So I'm going to dive in from there and see what it's all about. Next up, this is Who Fears Death by Neti Okorafor. With Neti Okorafor, we can always expect that we're probably going to get some Afrofuturism here. A lot of her work deals with sort of dystopian or post-apocalyptic Africa. And no surprise here, we get treated to that, I believe, in this book. Uh, this is post-apocalyptic Africa. There's been tribal genocide going on. There's a woman who's been raped, and she sees her village ravaged. It's just this horrible, horrible time going on. She has a daughter as a result of this rape, and she names her daughter Onyeson, Onyesonwu, and it means who fears death. And I think we are supposed to understand later on in the book why she is given this name and, and that meaning. The daughter, let's just call her Onye, is imbued with magical powers, and I believe that these tend to grow as she grows older. So as she aged, these magical abilities get more profound. There is spiritual realism in this book, spiritual mysteries, culture, and again, this is no surprise for Okura for we see a lot of that in her writing. I didn't know anything about this book going in, so I'm sort of just sort of putting together some things that I've read before in the jacket and on reviews of this. I just really love Okura for, and I saw this book and I knew I didn't have it, so this is definitely something that's going to be on my TBR that I'm going to get to probably sooner rather than later. There is uh, somebody who is trying to kill Onye in this book, and we guess we got to find out how she deals with that and if she succeeds, and I imagine her magic powers become involved in this in some way or other. I also have heard that this is going to become a series or a movie on maybe Netflix or HBO or one of these other streaming services. So I definitely got to make sure that I read this before I tune into one of those. There's no way I will watch that and then read the book afterwards. Next up on the list, this is Babel 17 by Samuel R. Delaney. I'm very much looking forward to this because I'm a big fan of Dahlgren, which is also written by Samuel R. Delaney, and that's the only thing of his that I've read. I know that this is a tale about a poet who is trying to crack some sort of a code, which turns out to be a secret language. This book was written in 1966. It won the Nebula Award. It uh, has really complex ideas in it, which if you know anything about Samuel Delaney, that's not going to be a surprise. 
the secret code that the poet is trying to decipher or figure out turns out to be the secret language, and the secret language turns out to be, I believe, some sort of key to unlocking the mystery of some powerful en enemy's secret deadly force. It's been called compulsive, maddening, intelligent, and I'm expecting to see all three of those things in this book. I also noticed that on this book, we've got Babel 17, but we also have Empire Star. And apparently Empire, that's upside down there, Empire Star is a novella that is often released with one of Delaney's other books and not often by itself. So this time we have it released with Babel 17. I don't know anything about this. I'm actually going to talk amongst yourselves. I'm going to just pull up a little summary here and we'll read this out loud. Okay. The narrator of Empire Star is a crystallized alien life form called Jewel. He tells the story alternating between the first person and third person omniscient perspectives. So this is sort of interesting, an alien life form. And in Claire and the Sun, we've got the AI uh, narrator. So I'm going to have some interesting narration in some of these books that I'm reading, if I read them all in a row, which is not likely to happen. And about the title, the titular Empire Star is the location of the galaxy's central government. It is a place where time and space can be navigated to access and control past or future events. So it sounds like I'm in for a bit of a thrill ride here. Maybe not, but definitely something compulsive, maddening, and intelligent. This will bring us to our next book, which is the one book in this group that I have read, which is Dahlgren by Samuel R. Delaney. So here we have Dahlgren. This book is very thick. I think it's about 800 pages. This book was written in 1975. Again, this is Samuel Delaney. The setting is a fictional, futuristic Midwest area or city. It's called Bologna. This is a place where there's been a mysterious disaster. And it's, I'm pausing because it's very difficult to talk about this book. It is very confusing. It's a very looping story. Uh, there's a neat sort of uh, connection between the beginning of the story and the end of the story. And we don't always know where we are in the actual story because you could pick up this book and sort of just twist it open. And this might actually be the beginning of the book right here. So that's not really helping you out, but it can tell you that you're in for something of a treat and a unique experience if you were to pick up this book and read it. I didn't have a copy of this book, so I had to get it. And when I was picking up Babel 17, I saw it right there on the screen. I said, oh, you know what? I don't have this. Let's order it. This is a story within a story. There's race, sexuality, gender, class. It takes effort, but it's worth it to read this. We get this really interesting main character, kid. We don't know if we're going to find out through this story exactly who he is or even what his name is. He loves sex. There's some really like, there are points in this story where there's some plot and there's some storyline, but then there's parts where it just kind of devolves into like this long sections about kinky sex. And when you read the whole book, it sort of all fits in, but you might have to read it twice to really kind of get your bearings on it. And this will, when I get this back to this again, it'll be my third time reading it through and I'm expecting it to be a different experience than the last two times that I read it. It can be looping. Yes, it can even be boring at times, but you come to appreciate even the boring moments in this book. Again, it's worth it, and I recommend this. It's the only one in this group that I've read, so I had a little bit more to say about it. And we've got one more book in here. I'm actually not going to talk about this. I got this for my son. This is Demon Slayer. I guess this qualifies as manga or anime. Demon Slayer, Kimetsu, and Yaiba. I have no idea what this is. I don't really read manga. I got this for my son, but if you like it and you want to see the cover, here you go. So I've got some really excellent books in this haul. I hope that even though I haven't read these books and I don't have much to say, I hope there was enough in there for you to get a feel of what these books are too. So with this list of titles, you can imagine that I'm really excited to get into each of these. The sad thing is I can only read one of these at a time. Clara and the Sun, Kafka on the Shore, Who Fears Death, Dahlgren, Empire Star, Babel 17. I've got some really great reading choices here. Thank you for watching today. I'm Michael Leverts. This is Fit to be Read. Please like, please subscribe. Please click the notification bell. 
please comment below and tell me what you thought about any of these books. I especially would love to hear from people who have read any of these and have something to contribute. And hopefully for the ones that you know which ones I have not read yet, it will be spoiler free. Thank you.